everyone. Today we're going to look at the properties of a rhombus. It is very important to remember that a rhombus is a parallelogram. When we were taught parallelogram, we were taught that the properties of a parallelogram. So a rhombus is a parallelogram. A square is a parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram. So grade 10, it is very important for you to memorize the properties of the parallelogram. But today we are looking in particular properties of a rhombus. But the first four are properties of a parallelogram and then the last two are specifically for a rhombus. Um, except for that one. The, uh, let's start with the first one. The first one says both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And then this one with all the other parallelograms except for a rhombus and a square, it says opposite sides are equal. With a rhombus and square, all sides are equal in length. And then the next one, both pairs of opposite angles are equal. And then the diagonals bisect each other. The diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. The diagonals, this one is specifically for a rhombus. The diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees. And then the diagonals bisect the interior angle. In grade 10, you are required to prove this conjecture and you are required to prove this conjecture. So in this lesson, we are particularly going to prove the two conjectures, but both of them are done in one proof. So you need to memorize this because except for proving the conjectures, we are supposed to apply the information to find sides and find angles. So we're going to find sides and find angles based on these properties of a rhombus. So let us go and prove the properties that they bisect each other at 90 degrees and that the diagonals bisect the corner angles. We're going to draw a rhombus. Uh, all sides are equal. And then we're going to call our rhombus A, B, C, D. This rhombus, we're going to also draw the diagonals. So we have diagonal DA and diagonal DC. After getting the rhombus, let us write the, put the properties of the rhombus. A rhombus, all sides are equal. So we're going to show that all sides are equal by doing that. And also, the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. So meaning that this will be equal to that and that line will be equal to that right so we're going to have the center here we're going to call it e and then it has four angles we're going to call angle one angle two angle three and angle four angle a has two angles we're going to call it a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 and d1 d2 this is the diagram that we're going to use to prove Number one, we're going to prove that the diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees. Number two, we're going to prove that the diagonals bisect the corner angles. Right. You remember, when, when we're looking at a, a, a theorem and we are, we are supposed to do a proof, you're supposed to write what you are required to prove. So in this question, you are required to prove that the diagonals bisect each other. So it means that angle E1 is equal to angle E2 and they are both equal to 90 degrees. So that's the first thing that you're going to prove. So that is what we are required to prove. We are required to prove that angle E1 is equal to angle E2 and both of them they are equal to 90 degrees. Because the theorem says that the diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees. But this particular theorem has two things that you prove. This is the first thing that you prove. The second thing that you prove is that these diagonals that they go at 90 degrees, they bisect the corner angles. So we're going to have angle B1 angle B1 is equal to angle B2. That is what you are required to prove. Angle B1 is equal to angle B2. If you can prove that the second part of the theorem is correct. In this proof, we're going to use congruency.
to go yes you remember that you need to do construction but this question came with the diagonals you construct when the shape doesn't have the thing that they're asking you in this question the diagonals are there so we don't need to construct right we can go straight and, and do our proof must I move the board okay this is what we are required to prove so we're gonna start with our proof so with this theorem we're gonna use congruency to prove so we're gonna choose triangle a e d and triangle a e b we're gonna prove these two triangles that they are congruent if they are congruent then they are equal in all respects so we're gonna write in triangle a e d and triangle a e b then we're gonna find three things that can make us say these two triangles are congruent we have line a b in the first triangle a d this line a d is equals to a b in the other triangle what is the reason that we say that these two lines are equal because it's a rhombus are lines of a rhombus are equal so we're going to write our proof as sides sides of rhombus you remember with the properties one of the second property there was all sides of a rhombus are equal so if all sides are of a rhombus are equal that makes this one and that one equal and then we need to write that right and then we have line D E D E equals to line B E on the other triangle line B E. Why are we saying they are equal? Because the diagonal, this diagonal bisected them equal. So you write diagonals of rhombus. Diagonals of rhombus bisect each other. There's a diagonal of a rhombus bisect each other, making these two lines equal. And then the last thing that we have, we have this line is common. In both triangles, we have the same line. Line A, E is equal to line A, E in the other triangle. And the reason is common side. The side is common. Right. We have three things that we have found. Therefore, we can say these triangles are congruent we go therefore triangle a e d is congruent to triangle a e b what is our reason we had a common side another common side and another common side so our reason is side 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 right if these two triangles are congruent it means they are equal in all respect. So we can say E1, this angle here, is equal to E2. Why do we say that? Because these two triangles are congruent. But what do we know about E1 and E2? E1 plus E2 are equal to 180. Why? The angles on the straight line. Angles on a on straight straight line. Right. If these two angles are equal, and both of them, when at them they give you an 180, it means each one of them is 90. Therefore, you can say, therefore, E1 is equal to E2 and both of them they are equals to 90. So when we look at what we are required to prove, we have proved you have proven the first part. 
So we are left with proving the second part. Let us look at the second part now. We have proven the first part of our theorem. Now we're going to look at the second part. But we use what we have done already. The congruency that we have done is what we're going to use. So it's not like we start a new theorem. As they put them together in one theorem, we prove them once. Right, we're going to do the second part of the proof. But we're going to use the congruent um, triangles that we have proven already. So with the second part, we have B1 is equals to D1. Why are they equal? We're going to use the, the congruent triangle. Triangle AED is congruent to triangle AED. This wave is proven already. Now, I have angle B. When you look at this one, we have parallel lines. Line C, B is parallel to line D, A because it's a rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. So I'll have this angle B2. This is my Z. My alternate angle goes like that. That's my parallel line. Then I go like this. Then my other parallel line. So I have B2 is equal to D1. B2 is equal to D1. What is my reason? Those are alternate angles. When you are using parallel lines, you have to say which parallel lines did you use. B, C is parallel to D, A. Those are the parallel lines that I was using. But when you look at here, B1 is equal to D1. B2 is equal to D2. They are both equal to D1. So therefore, I can say B1, angle B1 is equal to angle B2. Then we have proven that the diagonal bisect the corner angles because bisect means cut into equal part. So these two angles are equal. We've proven that. This is the end of our proof. Thank you.